Hi, and thanks for joining us in this next of a series of videos on the 2D frame analysis module in the Structural Engineering Library. If you're just joining the video series, we're up to the point now where we're about to discuss load combinations in this module. So for reference, we've already created model geometry for a single bay braced frame. We've applied uh, boundary conditions, member end fixities and releases. We've applied some joint loads and some member loads. We've assigned sections and materials to the model. And now we're up to the point where we will start on the load combinations tab. Typically a model will come uh, pre-populated with load combinations for both the service load combination set and the strength load combination set of the default load combination set in Structural Engineering Library. We can take a quick look at databases in the menu bar and then come down to load combinations to open the load combination database and the small triangle on the left hand column indicates the default load combination set. So if you wanted to establish for instance the 2006 IBC uh, load combination set you could just simply select it and then click set as default and that one becomes the one that's indicated as the default load combination set. I'll just reset mine to the IBC 2009 set and click close. Now for the purpose of this demonstration there are no load combinations in the model and notice that there's a blinking message down at the bottom of the screen that warns us that no load combinations have been set to yes or have been indicated as those that we wish to run. So in order to load some load combinations I'm going to come up and use the change load combination set button. This gives us a pop-up list of the load combination sets that are defined in uh, your installation of Structural Engineering Library and for our purposes I'll choose the uh, 2009 IBC set so I'll give that a click and then the load combination tab is populated with both the service level load combinations and the strength level load combinations associated with that uh, IBC 2009 set. Now it's likely that you won't want to run all of these load combinations in any one particular run. So we have a column here called run load combination and it's just a series of yes no checkboxes. So we can individually come in here and we can select load combinations that we wish to run. We also have a button up at the top of that column that allows us to mark all of the load combinations to run or clear them all or if we want to invert the selections from yes to no, no to yes, we can use that option as well. So those are just some quick ways that we can uh, manipulate the combinations that will be run. The next column is a group multiplier. This is just a simple way to apply uh, a factor to all of the constituent load cases that are included in the named load combination. So that's available for edit if you wish. And then from here on over we have the load factors that apply to each of the different load cases within the named load combination. Over at the far right we have two columns that handle the member self-weight. Um, the column that's headed Global X controls whether or not the member self-weight is to automatically be applied in the Global X direction. That would be a lateral direction of application. And the column headed Global Y obviously indicates whether the member self-weight is to be considered in the vertical direction, the global Y direction. The note down here at the bottom indicates that we want to use a negative value if we want the, the, uh, the self-weight to act in the negative Y or the downward direction and that's irrespective of the setting that we've chosen here on the general tab that allows us to conveniently control uh, applied loads different from self-weight loads. Um, without having to use the negative sign. So the, the takeaway point here is that the member self-weight is always going to use the algebraic sign 
to control its direction of application. So most commonly, self-weight would act in the downward direction, so we'd look to see negative values associated with those. The drop-down arrows up at the top of each of these columns provides uh, quick, convenient ways to clear all of the self-weight values in that column or to set them all to positive 1, negative 1, or a specified value. I would also point out that back at the load combination name column, there's a, a naming convention that indicates whether or not the member self-weight is to be considered and in which directions with what factor. That's the member weight indicator. So if I was to come back and just clear all of those, notice that those disappear from the load combination name column. And likewise, when I reset them to a value of minus 1, they all show up with that member weight in the y direction with a factor of minus 1. So at this point, depending on what we are intending to do with this run, what we might do is come in and just deselect all of the factored combinations, the strength level combinations, so that we could run uh, an analysis that would just be based on the service level or the unfactored combinations. And that would look something like that. So all of the strength level combinations are set to no. All of the service level combinations are now set to yes. One final note that I would add is that you do have the option to come in and actually add or delete combinations as you see fit. So for instance, if we knew that this was going to be a design based on allowable stress design and that we were never going to have a need for the factored or the strength level combinations, we can select those and just delete them for convenience so that we don't have to be bothered by those. And likewise, uh, there is also the add button so if we had some special combinations that we wanted to introduce, then that option's available to us as well. And so here we can see that I've just removed all of the combinations that we might not want um, for an ASD run. So hopefully this has been helpful. Um, the next step that we'll take a look at will be to uh, review some analysis results and we'll cover that in our next video. Thank you very much and have a great day.